What's going on, my dudes? We're back with Project 250R, and we are going to be doing some controls, and we're also going to be doing some protection today. So as I've mentioned in a couple of the videos, uh, we do have some parts from Precision Racing Products. Now, these are some super premium parts, and they're really special. So I want to take a little bit of time in this video to actually explain to you why these handlebar clamps and why the steering stabilizer is so much better than the competition, and just kind of give you guys an idea of how much it can actually benefit your bike. So we will be installing that along with our Pro Taper bars. We have our uh, rebuilt front master cylinder. We also have that the Trick uh, thumb throttle. Of course, we have our ASV clutch lever. We're going to just do all the controls and everything. And I also have grips for this thing too. I actually don't have them on the table. Uh, but we're going to be putting some ODI grips on here as well. And then the other thing that I want to do is take care of all of our protection on the swing arm. And we may or may not put this belly skid plate on. Um, I may wait until after we put the motor in to put that in, but we'll talk about it today since we're going to be doing other stuff from DRW Performance. All right, now for a moment here, I want to focus on the DRW stuff because this is the first stuff we're going to be putting on. So all of this stuff is really high quality. If you guys are familiar with DRW, you're probably more familiar with their case savers. I do have a case saver right here. This is made specifically for the 250R, and I can tell you by firsthand experience that these things are freaking badass. I have one of these on the Banshee. If you guys remember the last time I took it out, I ended up popping a chain and the DRW case saver fed it right out the back, no damage whatsoever. In fact, DRW is so confident in their case savers and all of their other products that they come with a lifetime warranty. So you may be wondering what some of these parts are. This is the rear sprocket guard and it's lightweight, low profile, and it's going to be super strong and protect that rear disc. So we may need to modify that just slightly to fit on our aftermarket swing arm, but it should fit just fine. And of course we have our sprocket guard. All of these parts are made out of a UHMW polyphylene, which is an extremely durable plastic. It's gonna hold up for the lifetime of the part. Like I said, these are all backed by a lifetime warranty. And most of these are lightweight, lighter than what you would get if you were to get any of the metal components as opposed to these polyphylene ones. Some other parts on the table here are a chain slide for our swing arm. This is also made by DRW. And we also have our rear chain guide. This is by TM Design Works, also another great company. I uh, would have gone with a DRW, but they didn't have one for the style swing arm that I'm running. So we'll run the TM Design Works. And of course, just a regular old chain roller for the rear. Now, when I showed you guys that I bought this part in a previous video, I got a couple DMs of people asking me how much this thing weighs. Well, I don't really know what it weighs. So what I'm gonna do is take a little luggage scale here, zero it out, and we'll see what it weighs. This should be somewhat accurate. And um, this is with all of the mounting hardware, I have all the bolts and everything attached. Looks like 4.9 pounds. All right, guys. So the first thing I wanted to knock out was getting on that chain slider. So all we have to do is uh, undo our swing arm bolt, our rear linkage bolt, and we were able to slide the assembly forward, get that thing on there, no problem. And it looked like we did have to do some touching up and some adjustments on this thing, which isn't really what I wanted to do because it was time consuming. But all we gotta do in a situation like that is just fix it with the Dremel and move on because complaining about things is for babies. And moving on here, we got our TM Design Works chain slider. Pretty straightforward installation. It's basically two bolts. But unfortunately, this didn't fit either. You gotta remember guys, this is, a, this is an aftermarket swing arm. So a lot of these parts uh, they're not actually made for this specific swing arm, so it's not really the company's fault that any of these pieces don't fit. And I'll tell you what, I had a hell of a time working with this material. Whatever this polyphylene stuff is, it is extremely durable and it's pretty tough. Even some of these like flapper discs and stuff just did not want to eat it away, but we did get everything to work. And now we're moving on to the rear sprocket guard and luckily that did not require any modifications. But as you can see, the bolts that I had were just a little bit too long. So I had to cut those down and all of that went together really nicely. And you didn't think I'd forget about the chain roller? Of course not. All right, so the sprocket guard and everything else went on fairly easy. 
Now, this might be a little bit more challenging. So this is our rear disc brake uh, guard. Now, what's gonna make it interesting is that this isn't an OEM swing arm. So that's probably why the other pieces needed to be modded as well, or the, uh, the chain slider anyway. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm definitely gonna have to do something, but if it was an OEM style swing arm, you know, it would fit on no problem. However, like I said, we're working with some custom stuff here. So let's pull up, we're gonna have to pull off the uh, brake caliper anyway. So I'm gonna pull the caliper off and we'll kind of put this thing in place, see how it sits, and see if we can come up with something to make this work. Now with that stuff off, you'll be able to get a better idea of how this is supposed to sit. So that's pretty trick. I can definitely see the functionality of it. Um, I'm gonna bring her on this side and I'll show you what we're working with. I think we'll be able to make it work. All right, so let's put this in place. Uh, right there is where it's supposed to go. And then you can see this piece, it's contoured to fit under the caliper and then bolt like so. Now, unfortunately, because this is an aftermarket swing arm, our biggest obstacle is gonna be this right here, this rear linkage mount. So I talked to Wes, the owner of DRW, he said putting a slot in this bracket, should it should still be strong enough. So we're gonna test it and see if it works. And um, you know, if it, if it doesn't work, uh, maybe we can have a custom one of these made out of billet aluminum so that we can make it a little bit thinner, but it'll still have the strength. I'm not sure, but this uh, polythylene is super durable stuff. Like when I'm cutting it and all, it's not the easiest stuff to cut. Even when I was cutting down that uh, chain, that chain roller, that's a, really aggressive flapper disc and it wasn't, it wasn't easy. All right, this thing took a lot of modifying and I had to come down pretty thin right here. Oh man, I'm not really happy with the, how much I had to shave on this thing. I mean, it. hopefully it still will be solid. I took some pictures and sent them to DRW, to see what they think. So this will be a somewhat of an experimental um, product, I guess. And uh, hopefully this will hold up. But you can see I made little slots on the underside to fit over these two bolts. And I'm actually gonna be removing this one. If I could do this over again, um, I could actually put the bolt straight through here and add a little bit of strength. So I still can do that. Uh, I just wouldn't have cut this section out. So I'm going to pull that out. Uh, the one up here, I mean, you could do that too. There's a hole, but because of the way the swing arm is, you, you'd have to drill a hole in the, um, this right here in order to get a bolt, you know, through there. I mean, that would be nice to make it a little bit more solid, but I don't want to drill a hole in our swing arm. So this will come up like this. And as you can see, there's a nut cert on this side. So the bolt's actually supposed to come through this way, but it'll be really difficult to do that. So I was thinking about shaving a portion of this or counter, you know, sinking on the other side and uh, pushing the bolt in. But I think it'll be easier if I pry out this countersink or drill it out, or, or not a countersink, the, um, the threaded nut cert. If I take the one out on this side and then put it on this side, make the bolt come through this way, it'll be a lot easier and uh, to install and take back off. And plus, it's not gonna get in the way over here. It's not like the other side where we have the chain or anything. So that should actually work pretty nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out. And something else I wanna do while I have, while I'm still modifying this thing, is I'm gonna mark holes because we have these uh, adjusting bolts that go in the back here. And I don't wanna have to remove my sprocket guard just to adjust the chain. So I'm going to, uh, make little access holes. I don't think that's gonna really compromise the strength too much, at least not more than what we've already done up here.
All right, let's see if we can get this super custom piece to fit. All right, it's looking good, no doubt. It's definitely a super trick look, very unique. I think it looks badass. Now, there is something that I'm unhappy with, and it's not any fault of DRWs, it's just this setup, and I'm gonna fix it. So, it is pretty tight, but you can see it does move up just slightly. And that's because there is a bolt that's supposed to go through here, and connect to our caliper stay you know we can't do that because we wouldn't be able to get a bolt in this side so there's two options here i could either drill a hole in my swing arm so that i can put have access to put a bolt in and tighten it or i'm more inclined to compromise the stay and what i'm planning on doing you can actually sort of see the back of the bolt coming through the other side if i take some porting tools some aluminum cutting uh, tools i can bore that out just slightly flatten the surface in there and make it so that the bolt can come through on this side go through and we'll be able to put a nut on the back just like we did up here so that should rectify the problem and a bolt head will fit in here just fine with no problem won't rub against the disc or anything that shouldn't cause any issues so i'd rather compromise this piece than the swing arm <laughs> so unfortunately i have to pull all this stuff back off in order to get the um the caliper stay off and modify all that stuff it's no big deal though so i'm just going to get it off real quick modify that piece and get it back together and we'll see how much stronger it is All right, there's that. That came out really nice. And I don't think that's gonna compromise the structure of this brake stay in any way, shape or form. The, um, this bolt fits in here perfectly. There's like no wiggle room at all. So this should enable us to make that uh, rear caliper guard and discard really strong. All right, I'm tired of playing games. Let's get this thing on. <laughs> Check it out guys, this thing is looking tight and it's nice and solid now. No wiggles or nothing. You can see here is our custom bolt. This is the area that we had to um, modify. I don't think that's gonna compromise the integrity of that caliper stay whatsoever. The caliper is free, it has play in it, which is what we want. And also if you come back here, you can see you can get in there and adjust the axle nuts or the uh, carrier nuts so that if you want to adjust the chain, we'll be able to. Because, I mean, the last thing we want is to have to take that thing off every time that we're going to adjust the chain. That'd just be ridiculous. All right, guys, so I've decided that I'm going to hold off on that belly skid plate. We'll do that uh, towards the end of the build. So for now, we got some precision stuff we got to put on. Basically, all of our controls got the pro taper, taper handlebars, and uh, I have the ODI grips out here now. So this is going to be really cool to throw this stuff on there and actually get a feel of what the, um, the front end is going to feel like. So the first thing that I want to put on are the risers. So they're going to slide over the pro taper bars, and then we'll be able to bolt them into the steering stem 
We've got roll design bushings right here. That should be pretty easy to do. I did want to explain slightly how these precision um, bar clamps actually work though. Now, they're kind of difficult to understand, but essentially these clamps have a floating portion, I guess you could call it, which allows the bars to move. So that's gonna absorb shock when you're going over bumps, hitting whoops, things like that. But the thing with the precision setup that differs from setups like the fast flex bars is that the precision system allows you to still use fixed bars. So as the quad pivots and tilts, you're still staying in line with your bars, which gives you a more connected feeling to the quad or bike. So I have never ridden uh, a machine with these yet, but the way that George, the owner, explained to me how these things work, it make, works, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so like I said, when you have fixed bars, your hands are staying, the angle of your hands stays the same. So you feel really nice and connected. Now, just imagine if these had a hinge here and here, like the fast flex bars. And I'm not saying anything bad about the fast flex bars, um, but from what I understand, these are quite a bit better. Uh, a lot of people prefer these. You can imagine because of the pivot, it changes the angle of your hands. So not only, and one side can move down where this side can go, they can move individually and it gives you a more disconnected feeling to the machine. Um, what George was telling me is that a lot of the guys that do run the fast flex bars, um, they usually tighten them up so tight that they're almost not even moving. So this should be a better setup. I was reading online reviews. A lot of guys that race and stuff said they switch to precision and they never go back. So it's all an opinion based thing, uh, but I do think that this is a superior design. I'm really excited to try it out on the 250R. And I think I'm gonna pick a, a set of these up for the Banshee too, because man, that thing beats you up. So these are gonna help a lot with control and also fatigue and also bike feedback. So it should be really, really nice to ride with these things. And I bet you I'll be able to ride faster too. So let's get our handlebars mounted and we'll put our controls and stuff on and then we'll come back to the precision stabilizer because it'll be easier to install with the handlebars on there so we can make sure that everything's nice and straight. So let's go and do the bars. Oh yeah, let's get this bad boy on. So we got our pro taper bars here. These are ATV mid, that's the bend. I had quite a few people asking me in my DMs. And you wanna make sure that you have these bolts facing forward. You can see the back doesn't have them. So we just slide these into place. Now if you're using an anti-vibe stem like I am, there is a crossbar that goes across here for stability. So we're gonna pull out these four bolts and then we'll put this in place and you might notice it's a little bit different. The arms are a little bit longer on the top than the bottom. I don't know if this is the top or this is the top. It shouldn't make a difference. So I'm gonna put it this way towards the top and then I'm just gonna throw these in. I'm not going to tighten these down just yet. I'm just gonna put a little bit of tension on these and get my bars where I want them. Now I'm gonna tighten these down to 11 foot pounds. Now that we have those torqued to 11 foot pounds, we can tighten down these post bolts. And the manual calls for 30 foot pounds. Now that they're tight, it's possible that things are repositioned up here just slightly. So we're gonna go ahead, loosen up these bolts just slightly. And then we're gonna re-tighten it back down to 11 to 12 foot pounds. All right, now we're gonna put on our ODI grips. These are really easy. You literally have these two little rings that snap on each side. Wow, this one's really tight. And I'm sure this will still go on just fine. I'll probably just have to tap it on. And for this, I'll probably put a little bit of a wedge in here just so that it fits on easier. I probably should have done this first, but I want to take out the little pro taper end cap so that the ODI one fits on there more flush. And we've got these tiny little bolts that 
tighten down our clamps. And I am putting a small amount of Loctite on these because I don't want the grips to spin. See, that's how it should go on. Wow, I can already tell this thing is gonna handle like a beast. It just feels comfortable, even without the foot pegs or anything on there. I just, I'm telling you, this thing is gonna handle so awesome. Looks pretty cool getting those back fenders on. It's kind of like a tease of what it's gonna look like. Once we get those graphics on there, and guys, the graphics came in, they look freaking sick. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely check out my Instagram page. I have a couple pictures posted up. I got them printed by AGMX Graphics and they did an excellent job. One other thing I wanted to mention about these precision bar clamps is they are adjustable. So you can soften them or stiffen them up depending on what kind of riding you like and the feel that you like. It comes with a little shim kit. It's pretty easy from what I understand. You literally just pull the bolts out of the top of these clamps and change out your shims and you can adjust how firm you like them. All right, guys, now to get into the technical stuff. So I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of explain to you guys how this steering stabilizer works. Uh, first and foremost, Precision offers these for pretty much any quad. They also have stabilizers for motorcycles and dirt bikes. You guys can check them out at precision-rp.com. And like I said, they make these for just about any one of the models that are available nowadays, including older models. So there's three different ways that you can get this uh, stabilizer. You can get it in the regular form, there's a pro form, and then there's an elite form. So this is the elite. It's supposed to be the best one that they offer. Now, the original one is a great design as well. If you step it up the pro you're gonna get a reservoir which is gonna help with thermal expansion so once your um, system is heated up you would have different characteristics because of that reservoir in the pro and elite models it's gonna keep the uh, performance of the stabilizer pretty even across the board no matter what temperature you're at and if you bump it up to the elite like the model that I have you're gonna get a couple more improvements you're gonna have further adjustability for your steering and straight ahead damping you're also gonna have larger wear surfaces so this is gonna last a little bit longer than the other models and it's supposed to have up to 65% better impact damping compared to previous models. So now that you know the basic styles from Precision, you might be wondering why these things are so freaking expensive because they are expensive, man. This Elite setup is 600 bucks, man. That's a lot of money to be spending on a small piece. And if you don't know what you're getting, you can think that you're overpaying big time. Now you guys have probably seen, they have stick style um, dampers. Now they could be good too. I mean, I've run them before. I actually have one on the Banshee. Um, granted, it's an old school Denton one and it works, but it's really not very good. You know, I talked to George, the owner, for like literally an hour and a half, and he was explaining all kinds of stuff to me. The guy obviously knew what he was talking about, and something that uh, he explained was that those old stick style ones, like a streamline, um, if you're gonna race, it's probably only gonna last you like one or two times. Um, a lot of those guys, like the pro riders, they would literally go through one stick a race, and that was before they came out with the precision style uh, dampers because 
now that these are out, pretty much everybody runs these. Now, if you're familiar with dampers, you're probably also familiar with a CCP company, which makes a product that looks very similar. It's a very similar design to the Elite Mod, to the Precision model. However, it's about a third of the price, but there's a reason for that. Now, one of the things that you're gonna get with a Precision over other companies is that you can adjust not only the side-to-side -side play when you're steering, but you can also adjust how you want this thing to, ha to handle when you're going straight ahead. So that may be a little bit confusing, but when you're driving a quad or a dirt bike, when you're going straight ahead, the stabilizer is gonna be in a fixed position. And when you're turning, the stabilizer is gonna be in a different position. So it's gonna offer different amounts of resistance. One of the things that it can prevent in a straight ahead situation is if you're going over whoops, and the back of the quad is popping up in the air and wants to go left and right, it's gonna help you keep in a straight line and it's gonna make you go faster. So not only are you gonna get better performance with the precision, but you're gonna get more longevity, like a lot more. So this thing is gonna last you a lot longer. You're not gonna have to replace it. And you're also, when it comes time to sell your quad, it's gonna have add, add a lot more value to it. If you take this piece off and sell this, you're still gonna be able to get money for it. Whereas if you go with something like a CCP or a stick style damper, you're not really gonna be able to fetch that much money for it. So these are rebuildable systems. George was telling me there's guys that have like 200 hours of racing on these things and they're still rebuildable, serviceable, and usable. It's crazy. Now these things are also made from a more durable material than what you're gonna get if you get something like a CCP. So this is you, these are made using a process called hard anodizing, and that is one of the strongest and most wear resistant ways that you can build one of these things. So on this chart, you can see the precision damper is the red line, and the CCP below is the green line. So to get to 0.005, five thousandths of an inch of wear, the precision will go over 10 times more cycles. So that just translates to this being able to take more abuse, more turning cycles, and basically just last way longer than a CCP setup. And of course, if you do go with Precision, you're gonna have great customer service. I've already spoken with George over the phone and I've been in contact with him through email. He's always really quick to respond. And any parts that you're gonna need for this thing, you're gonna be able to get the availability is awesome. Now, one last thing that I wanna mention before we go to install this thing, Something that George told me over the phone that really kind of opened my eyes, he said, when you go to a race, he said, when you go down the starting line and you look at everybody's stabilizers, you see precision, 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 CCP, precision, 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 precision. Almost everybody runs precision. And that says something right there. Now, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your steering is facing perfectly straight. All right, guys, now I'm going to do my best to show you how to install this thing. The front of the quad is this way, just in case you guys are disoriented. And the mount or the stabilizer is going to be mounted in front of your brake union and behind the steering stem. On some other quads, they're mounted in the front of the steering stem. So this is where it goes on the 250R. So we're gonna place it in between these frame rails and tilt. You can see how there's a this is shaped like a wedge. That's so that it's it matches the angle of the steering stem. I'm gonna put our clamp underneath and just start threading the bolts in so that it holds it in place. All right, guys, well, I totally lied. So this actually isn't supposed to go in the back. And you can see it would fit on there, but the problem is there's not a 90 degree bend right here and right here. So it says in the instructions that there should be a 90 degree bend when you get to your steering stem. And if you need to, just to adjust back and forth until it's at that 90 degrees. But this is as far back as we can go. So it just doesn't work. Now I saw pictures online of guys mounting them here, so that's actually why I thought they went there. But I did find some other pictures where they're mounted in the front, and that will allow us to have the full 90 degrees. Let me show you. All right, let's try this again, but this time we're gonna mount it up front right here. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see from that top, but this is the angle right here. It's important. We want to make sure that's 90 degrees. All right, now I'm gonna put this clamp on and I wanted to show you before I put it in place, there is a tiny set screw in here that we're gonna to have to adjust once it's on there. So same thing as always, guys, I'm using blue Loctite on these. Right, so I'm just bringing these in somewhat loosely. Now I'm gonna tighten down this clamp and these get tightened down to 25 foot pounds. Now I wanna double check, make sure everything is nice and straight. And with these hand tight, I'm going to bring in our set screw just until it touches. And then I'm gonna go one quarter turn. And these clamp bolts get tightened down to 13 foot pounds. All right, so that was pretty easy. That realistically could be put on even in less than 15 minutes pretty tight. I made sure 
Uh, there's clearance everywhere. It doesn't hit in any places. Here is that 90 degree angle. It's, it's, it's pretty much right at 90 degrees though. Uh, the one in the back is not quite, you can see, it's just slightly off. The only way to fix that would be to move the, the mount forward, but that's impossible. We're butted all the way up to the front. So that's about as close as I can get. Now I think that this is what's most important, this angle right here, because you can see the actual shaft that comes out of the stabilizer, that is its center. So for the center damping and side damping, I think that's why it's important for the location of that center stud. So I think this should be good. Definitely looks trick. So I wanna hop on this thing and kind of move the handlebars around, see what it feels like. I've never even experienced a stabilizer like this. So this will be the first time actually putting weight on the suspension. I don't have pegs on here, so it's gonna be a little weird. Oh yeah, dude. Everything is really tight. It's gonna be really difficult to tell, you know, the differences of all this stuff until we're actually riding it. But I'll tell you what, everything is super, super tight. That's for sure. All right, guys, well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting extremely excited. I can't wait to ride this thing, dude. I wanna feel what the suspension feels like. Like so bad, you have no idea. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. So we won't be able to give an honest review on how this uh, precision stuff really performs until, you know, after we actually have this thing on the track and trails. But there is a chart that Precision includes, and it kind of gives you like a baseline for different types of riding. They got MX track, average, MX rough track, TT track, cross country, different stuff like that so that you can adjust your damping settings, kind of like get it in the right ballpark before you even get started. Now you may notice we didn't put the ProDesign kill switch on. We're gonna do that in another video. I'm not 100% sure, uh, sure where I wanna locate this thing. So in closing guys, I wanna give a huge shout out to DRW Performance. Definitely check them out if you wanna get any kind of protection for your ATV. You're pretty much looking at the best kind of protection you can get bar none, especially when it comes to the poly stuff. You can check them out at drwperformance.com. I also wanna give a huge thank you to George at Precision. You guys should definitely check out their stuff. Uh, you know, I'm starting to learn dealing with all these different companies, there's some companies that are just outstanding and Precision and DRW are definitely two really good ones. So you can find Precision at precision-rp.com. And like I said, they make these stabilizers for just about any machine. So please give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content. I appreciate everybody following the build, man. I cannot wait to get this thing done. We're gonna be taking it to Silver Lake next month. So in the next video, we're probably gonna finish up the motor uh, because we're pretty much there. We're, we're ready to put that motor in there. One last thing, guys. <laughs> You were probably laughing at me the last video when I did the um, that rear reservoir mount. This one back here. So you can see we've switched things up a little bit. I actually had this ESR one the whole time and I just totally forgot about it. <laughs> so this goes up here. It's so crazy though, a bunch of you guys actually reached out to me and uh, in my DMs and you sent uh, screenshots of my video where I showed where I got that hanger with all the ESR parts and I just totally forgot. The uh, brake reservoir can bolt up to this also. It's kind of crazy. And you probably noticed also the red brake lines did come in and I had to make this little bracket right here. So that's custom. You kind of have to do that to put this little uh, union in there. But it looks really good. And I just wanted to give a shout out to ATV Galaxy. Um, they shipped these parts out immediately. So it was a slight mistake. Um, sending the wrong lines and they fixed that issue really quick. That's a really good sign of a good company. So yeah, guys, just wanted to share that. And so that rear caliper or the rear reservoir thing, we're actually not gonna use the ESR one. When I posted that up, NPM sent me a message and they're like, dude, we're gonna design one for you. You can't run that thing. So we're gonna be running an NPM one that's gonna look freaking sick. So that should be here any day now. You guys have probably seen it on their Instagram. If you haven't already, definitely check out their Instagram page. All right, guys. Peace.